Hey, what's up guys? So a few things to talk about. Uh, first thing I want to do though is get your input on something. I've got a viewer, his name, uh, guy's name is Sean. He's a young guy. He's having his first child and he wants to build a crib. So he sent me this email if I had any thoughts. Um, and to be honest with you, I don't. So I haven't gotten back to him yet and maybe you have some thoughts and you could uh, give Sean a little advice. So you ought to know that his budget is $350 for materials and he wants it to be a dark wood. So staining it, uh, I would imagine, uh, because I don't think you're going to be able to find enough material in something like walnut for $350. So the reason why I didn't get back to Sean is because I just don't have a good answer. Um, the thing with cribs is there's just a, a lot of variables. There's safety issues. You have to think about the finish, and I just uh, I just couldn't really come up with any good advice. The best advice I have for Sean, and I hope I'm not being a buzzkill, is I don't think I'd build a crib. I'd build a changing table, and the reason why I would do that is a crib is only for so long. And you know, this is from a guy who has four kids. Uh, the the time that your kids are in a crib just kind of goes by real quickly. And the crib kind, kind of gets beat up with the kids chewing on the crib and all that sort of stuff. So if you really want to build it, go for it. But my feeling is if you build a changing table, like a chest of drawers, you could kind of modify the top. So maybe remove the top once the kid's a little bit older. And then that child will have that, that uh, dresser drawer that you made for them. And they, that's something they can have their whole life. So. Um, that's my advice. If you guys have any good advice on building a crib, please leave it in the comments. I hope that helps, Sean. Uh, the next thing I want to do is another, uh, uh, another thing to get your input on is I've got a project coming up, and this probably won't be a video. I have to frame this artwork. This is from Cuba, and I have to mount. This is painted on steel. Or it's probably an old sign, and I guess the artist did something to it, but it's a Cuban artist. And so I have to mount this somehow, probably on a plywood frame, and then I'm going to put the whole thing into a shadow box. That's what I'm guessing. I'm going to meet with the client uh, probably in a, over the weekend, actually. Uh, my question is, I'm not really sure how I want to mount the steel on the plywood. Do I, what kind of adhesive do I want to use? I even thought about using rare earth magnets so that way I wouldn't be using any glue on the back of the sign. Um, anyway, if you have a good idea about that please leave that in the comments too. So now we're just going to go about, I'm going to go on about the details of this project because I've got the whole uh, modern cabinet all laid out now. Everything has been sanded it's all ready to go for its first coat of water locks. And I just wanted to talk about some of the details, some of the things that you really don't get into during a build video because they're just, you know, just a lot of little things. So one question I wanted to answer right away from Jack. He was asking, how did I cut the mortise? How did I cut the, um, the edge banding after the mortise? And in fact, I put the edge banding on the hinge side of the door before I cut the mortise. So that's something I didn't really talk about, but that's how that was done. So I basically put the edge banding on the one side, but didn't put it on the other side, and then cut the mortise, and then I cut the doors to fit the cabinet. One other thing I want to mention is the other side of the door where the hinge isn't, I cut that side of the door at a four degree angle. So it's just a, one of those little things that um, makes the door close a little bit better because you wouldn't want this side of the door to hit the cabinet. So after I cut it on a four degree angle, I was able to put the edge banding on. Something else, uh, I finished the inside of the cabinet and the back of the doors with lacquer. And I did that because it's just a big time saver you can spray lacquer and, and it dries really quickly. So I was able to get three coats on the doors and the inside of the cabinet. I sprayed the bottom of the cabinet and 
the reason why I didn't spray the whole cabinet with lacquer is because I like to use water locks on walnut, especially on walnut, because it just really brings out the grain. It's, um, it's just a really nice finish. So uh, this cabinet is, all, is going to really be about the grain. I did a lot of work in trying to make sure uh, the grain matched up nicely as the veneer went around the cabinet, and I really want that to pop. This is probably, or it definitely is, my biggest veneer project so far. I've never, um, I've done a couple of veneer uh, things where I veneer the door fronts or the drawer fronts. I made a small cabinet, uh, some end tables last year, but this is definitely the biggest project. And you always learn a little something on a project. So my advice for anybody who's going to uh, build this project, because I will have free plans available when the whole thing's done. Um, if you've never worked with veneer before, do one or two smaller projects first, just to get warmed up with the little things that you kind of learn along the way. So one of those things is when you use, let me, let me start with first the glue. The, um, the contact cement, for one, if you're doing this in your basement, you might not want to do it because it just has such a strong smell. There's warning labels on the can that you can't have an open fire like in your furnace uh, because the, the fumes just really gather. So the entire time I did all of the contact cement work, I had my respirator on, I had that window open and the fan going. Uh, so definitely work with, this th or work with this stuff in a safe way. Uh, the next thing I wanted to mention is, this is something that I started doing a little while ago. When I find the material to be very absorbent, meaning when you put the first coat of contact cement down, uh, 15 minutes later, if it looks like it, there's just not much there, you can put a second coat. It's, it's not going to hurt, and some guys say uh, it's really a good thing to do. So that's something that I've been doing, especially on uh, projects that I um, just mean a lot to me. Uh, and it really depends on the absorption of what you're working with. And the paper-backed veneer seems to really absorb the, the contact cement. So I put one coat on, let it dry, come back, put a second coat on, let that dry, and then I'm ready to bond the two surfaces together. <clears throat> Another thing is when I'm using the uh, flush cut bit in the router to trim the edge off, maybe my, my bit's a little bit dull, I probably could use a newer bit, but uh, in some areas it was kind of folding the, the paper and the adhesive over a little bit. So it was taking the majority of the material off, but it was leaving just kind of a little bit of a residue on the edge of the door or the edge of the cabinet, depending on what I was working on. And you don't want to leave that there and finish it in. So I use a sanding block and just carefully sand that off. But it did take a little time. And um, it's something you want to kind of, uh, kind of keep an eye out for if you're going to build something like this. Okay, well, I guess that's about all there is to talk about. I will be getting the first coat of finish on any minute now. I'm really excited for that. And this project will not, the video will not be done by this weekend. I'm going to give myself another week to get all the finish on, uh, install the hardware, edit the video, all that kind of stuff, and draw up the plans. I will have free plans for this project. And those are my plans where I do the drawing. But about two or three weeks after the video goes up, with my plans uh, in the website, I'll be getting really professional plans made up by Brian. I forget Brian's last name, but Brian does really professional SketchUp plans, and those will be for free too. So if you're gonna build this and you really want great plans, just wait a couple of weeks and uh, you'll be able to get the, um, the free professional SketchUp plans. And those plans are are possible because of the guys at Patreon. So you don't have to become a Patreon member. They're, the plans are for everybody, but I do appreciate you guys being patrons because you've made it possible for me to bring this to the show. And I think it definitely adds something. So as always, guys, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.